Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you step by step how to start a coding blog. So be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell if this video or any other video on the channel helps you out. So basically what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about what a coding blog is. We are going to tell you why picking a niche is so important, especially when you first get started. I'm going to show you examples of coding blogs. I'm going to show you how to install WordPress step by step. WordPress is the content management system that we're going to use to help us write blog posts faster. After that, we are going to uh, go through the exact process of getting WordPress installed and getting a free domain name when you click that first link in the description. We're going to install WordPress, a WordPress theme, and the important changes that you need to make. And we're going to do all of that really quick. It's really easy, but I'm going to walk you through it. After that, I'm going to show you how to start writing. There's a simple five-step process that I use to start writing, and then we can get up and writing right away. Also, I'm going to show you about some different ways that you can make money from your blog or your website why you need to share it on social media when you first get started, about how many blog posts you should write before determining if your website's a success or a failure, and then make sure that you have clicked the links in the description to get up and running. So let's go ahead and get started. What is a coding blog? A coding blog is simply a blog where you're answering questions and solving problems about the coding platform. Now this can mean just about anything. You could be talking about the assembly language, you could be talking about Node.js, JavaScript in general, C++, you could be talking about coding in reference to video games or building out software. You could even be talking about coding with regards to websites. So uh, the coding niche is pretty large and I recommend that you niche down. So let me show you some examples of coding blogs done right. So if we take a look at this website, nshipster.com, I think this is a really good example and something that you should model your website after. The reason why I like it is because they're focusing on Objective-C, Swift, and Coca. These are programming language or coding languages. And if you look through this website, that's what he is focusing on. Everything they are focusing, I should say. Everything with regard to this website is regarding or surrounding these three things. Now, when you're first getting started with your website, you need to niche down. And I recommend focusing on maybe a framework, focusing on a programming language, focus on a tiny aspect of the coding niche, because as I mentioned, it's pretty large. And what you're gonna wanna do is um, actually teach people something, give them more information, maybe show them how to how to do a process or a task. Maybe if you start with Python, start with something smaller within Python, because everybody knows Python's pretty competitive and a lot of people are writing about it. But I like this, this website because again, they're talking about Xcode. They're talking about uh, objective C they are really niche down and that's how you're gonna grow faster now in the beginning you can do start here as your website grows larger and gets more domain authority you can niche up and start talking about general topics like JavaScript and maybe just C++ and, and C sharp and some of the other ones out there but when you first get started you have to niche down if you don't niche down and you don't talk about a very targeted part of coding you're gonna struggle after that, we need to get web hosting and get a domain name. Now, web hosting is simply a third party company that we're going to rent or borrow hard drive or server space from, and they're going to host our website files. Hence the term web hosting. We're going to rent something for as low as $3.95 per month using the first link in the description. And they're going to store our website files so people from around the world can visit our website. When you click that first link, you'll actually get a domain name for free. And now I'm actually going to walk you through the steps. It takes like four or five minutes to get up and running, but I'm going to walk you through the steps of setting up your web hosting and domain through Bluehost. When you click that link, you'll be taken to this website where you'll go ahead and click get started. What I recommend is to click the first one on the far left, the basic plan, if you're just getting started with a website. As you can see, there are a number of options, but click that, click select, and then move on. Here you're going to create a domain name. If you have one in mind, you can type it in here like you see that I do. What I recommend is try and find a domain name that's going to be related to your niche. Now, what I do is I type in a domain name that I know is already taken. When it's taken, you're gonna get this error. What you can then do is go back and try different domains. Now make sure again, you wanna pick one that's related to your niche. Click next, and then you're gonna see a green box that says that it's approved. The next step is simply to go through and enter in your contact information. Make sure that you, when you scroll down here, make sure that you leave all of the settings on. Um, but again, enter in your contact information, the settings right here where it says domain privacy, leave all of this checked. 
If you don't leave a check, you're going to get people reaching out to you, uh, spamming you, emailing you, trying to get you to sign up for web hosting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and sign up and then jump back to you once I sign on and move to the next step. All right, so I have signed up and I'm going to go ahead and set up my website initially. Just create a simple username and password, make sure it meets the requirements there and then move on. Um, make sure that you write it down too. Write it down in a safe spot so that you have it and you remember it because it can be a pain to go ahead and get everything back. You're gonna have to enter in like some vital information, but just make sure that you write it down. It's really easy and really simple. Now, one thing that I do wanna note is that this part is not sped up at all. This is actual real time, and you can see that you'll go from absolutely nothing to a complete website in less than probably 10 minutes. And once you click submit, you're gonna move on to the next step where you get to log in. Here is where you're actually going to start creating your WordPress website. Now the great thing is, is Bluehost really does everything for you and it's really simple. So again, I'm not speeding this up at all and I want you to see what it really takes to create a website. Bluehost is gonna do a little bit of work in the background for you and we're just gonna actually click on skip this step. This one, first one I clicked on start a blog but for the next step just click skip because we know what we're doing and i'm actually going to tell you what to do so that we can get up and running click get started right here on the left hand side and then move on just click skip here and click skip here and then just pick the first one in the far left make sure that you're picking a free theme because they'll charge you they have both free and premium themes which i'll talk about in just a moment so right now it's actually creating your wordpress website in just a few moments, you're going to click on log in to WordPress on the right hand side there. You'll see it in just a second. And then we can actually start looking at some basic configurations. All right, so we click log in and now we actually have a WordPress website. What may need to happen is you may need to click refresh a few times to get it to, to work. But now we have our website, as you can see. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to log in and delete a few plugins because right now it has the coming soon and so if someone tried to get to your website at this moment, it's going to say coming soon to them, even though we can see it. This is what your WordPress website looks like. But for everyone else outside of your network, it's going to say coming soon. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to plugins eventually, and we're going to delete some of the plugins that we don't need. Now, I talk a little bit about plugins later on, but um, plugins add additional features and functionality. We are going to deactivate the Bluehost as well as the um other plugins that are already activated and then we can go through and make the necessary changes which i'll cover in just a moment so we're going to deactivate them and then delete them now you want to make sure that you only have the plugins that you're using on your website the more plugins you have the slower your website's going to respond and, and function and you're going to lose out on ranking so make sure you have a lean setup very few plugins and then move on as you can see right now i'm just simply deleting some stuff that you don't need if you want to, you could keep them, but obviously if, if you're just getting started, you don't need this other stuff. What's more important is the themes that we're going to talk about in just a moment, as well as getting writing. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete, delete those, deactivate them, and then we're actually going to start moving on to settings, which you see right here. All right, so let's go ahead and make some changes that we absolutely have to make so that you can start getting traffic. The first thing that you want to do is you want to change your site title. Your site title is going to be the title of your website. You can make this basically your domain name. For example, my domain name is Web Hosting Rewind, and you can see that's my site title. And then the tagline is basically what your website's all about in a very succinct manner. As you can see here, mine says, get the latest news and info on all things web hosting. What you want to do is make sure that yours is relevant to your niche. For example, if you are creating content about makeup, you can say, come here for the latest tips and tricks for all things makeup. Next, you want to make sure that your WordPress address is HTTPS and not HTTP. Make sure your site address is HTTPS as well. And then the administration email should automatically be set. Um, uncheck the membership so that anyone can register. Make sure that this is unchecked. Um, if we scroll down here, you want to change your time zone to your time zone. There are all sorts of them here. Next, you want to make sure that you have your date format set to the way you want, and then go ahead and click save. If we go down to writing, there isn't anything in writing that we need to change. After that, we're going to go to reading. In reading, very important, you want to make sure that your homepage displays to your latest post. That's the first thing. And the second one is you want to make sure that your search engine visibility is unchecked. Do not check this. 
discourage search engines from indexing this site. You do not want this because if this is checked, people aren't going to be able to find your website and everything that we do after this is going to be a waste. So go ahead and click save. This should be unchecked. Next, if we go down to discussion, there really isn't anything that we need to change here. Media, we can leave this as is, and then permalinks is going to be really important. Right now, your permalinks are set to plain. You want to change it to post name. This is done for search engine optimization. What's going to happen is when we create a new blog post, we are going to make it so that it's search engine optimized. We're going to use the keyword in our title, and that keyword is going to show up right here as well. And this is called search engine optimization. Make sure that it's set to post name and then go ahead and click save. And really that's everything that you need to do to make sure that you start getting traffic. All right, so now that you have WordPress installed, you have a basic WordPress theme and you've made some important changes, I want you to uh, install a premium WordPress theme. Now the reason why you wanna install a premium WordPress theme is because it's going to add additional features and functionality. Now I like to use a website called ThemeForce and you can find it in the second link in the description. And you can actually go here and find hundreds if not thousands of different WordPress themes. Now again, premium WordPress themes will add additional features and functionality. Also usually they're cup up to date even more. And as you know, in the world of, of the internet and internet websites, the more updated it is, the more secure it is. So what you can do is you can just type in like coding or programming, hit enter, and you're gonna find themes that work with your your niche or your your overall website theme so what you want to do is go through look at a few of the examples and find one that you like and simply click this add to cart button the next step once you add it to cart is you're going to want to check out and buy the wordpress theme once you buy the theme you're going to download a zip file to your computer unpack that zip file and then you're going to have a second zip file so you're going to have a zip within a zip once you have that zip file, you're going to go back over to the back office of your website. Let's just get out of there. You're going to go down to appearance. You're going to go to themes and you are going to click on add new. When you click on add new, you are going to click on upload theme and then you're going to drag and drop that second zip file right here. You can also click on choose and go through the steps and find it that way. Once you get it, install and then click activate. You're going to have a brand new WordPress theme. The next step is really to just go through and start writing. When you start writing, you're gonna go up to post. You're going to click on add new. Now, what you will wanna do is you're gonna find a bunch of keywords that you wanna write for during your keyword research phase. Those keywords are going to be the title of your post. For example, if we go back to NS Hipster, they have, for example, identified that language server protocol is a keyword that people are searching for. They have made that the title of their post and the title of their post is actually the title of the blog post or web page. And we're going to do the same thing. In the previous step, I actually showed you how to change the post title or the post URL from plain to the actual post name. That's why we did that so that when we create a post title, it automatically will get updated to the name. And so let's say, for example, we found an, an identified a keyword of, let's see, how to start, how to create your own framework. So let's say we identified that um, this is a keyword that we can potentially rank for. Now, obviously you wanna make sure you have the appropriate uh, capitalization, but this is going to wind up being the title of our webpage. So it'll be webhostingrewind.com forward slash how to create your own framework. People that are searching this will discover your website potentially and you will get discovered and make money. So um, the biggest questions that I always get when it comes to building a website and writing is how do I start writing and how long should the blog post be? What I recommend to answer both these questions is A, the web post blog post should only be as long as it needs to be. And what I mean by that is if it takes a thousand words to answer this question, your blog post should only be a thousand words. If it takes 5,000 words, that's how long it should be. You should never take a thousand word writable blog post to make it 5,000 words, that is just a waste of time, energy, and effort. What you wanna do is take a look at the blog posts that appear in the first 10 or so um, results when you search, for example, how to create your own framework. If they're all 2,000 word blog posts, make yours about 2,000, 2,500. 
and you can potentially start raking. And with regard to how do I write and what do I write, the method that I like to use is who, what, when, where, why, and how. And what I like to do is I like to take 10 minutes and just brainstorm. I like to ask myself questions with regard to the blog post title. And I, eventually I'm going to turn those questions into headings where I'm going to write. Um, so one of the questions obviously is going to be how to create a framework. I could ask myself, what is a framework? Why is a framework important? These are all questions that I'm going to ask myself and that's going to help me write faster because I'm just going to go through and I'm simply going to answer these questions and they're all related to my keyword. And once I'm done with my brainstorming session, I'm simply going to turn these into H2s and these are going to be subheadings. This right here is our heading. These are subheadings. And then underneath my H2s, I'm simply just going to write and answer the questions. This is actually going to save you a lot of time when writing. Now, when you're in the brainstorming session, just put everything down. You could have completely bad ideas, but don't let those bad ideas stand in the way of the good ones. You can just delete the bad ideas later. What you can do is you can do this in a Google Doc. You can do this right here in, in your WordPress website. It might be easier to do it within a Google Doc, though. So uh, that's how I start writing. Go ahead, answer these questions, write out your blog post, and then click publish. Once you click publish, it will be alive and ready for the world to respond and react and consume. The next step, if we go back over to our slide deck, we've got the start writing. The next step is simply different ways to make money. Now, there are a few different ways to make money with your website. One is simply with paid ads. Now, paid ads are ad placements that you can work with different ad, you can work with different ad agencies and you'll get paid pennies on the dollar. It doesn't look like they're running paid ads, but you can work with a company called Google AdSense. So if we go to Google AdSense, and Google AdSense will allow you to have ads right on your website. Now, no, you will not make a bunch of money in the very beginning with Google AdSense. You are going to get paid pennies on the dollar, A, because you don't have a lot of visitors, B, because Google AdSense doesn't pay a lot. Once you start getting significant traffic, like 1,000, 5,000, 10,000 page views, per month, you can start working with bigger ad agencies like AdThrive, Media.net, and Ezoic. They're gonna pay you much more and you're gonna make a decent amount of money when you continue to write and start getting the uh, uh, amount, the required page views. Another way that you can make money is simply with affiliate marketing. Now, affiliate marketing is recommending or selling other people's products and services. If we go back over to, if we go back over to these websites and we're writing about coding, you have to think about some of the things that coders need. They probably want a decent uh, keyboard, mouse. They probably may want standing desks. They may want decent computers, multiple monitors. These are all things that coders or programmers are going to need. And so you can be an affiliate for that. One of the largest affiliate programs out there is Amazon Associates. You can go to amazon.com, scroll all the way to the bottom and click on become an affiliate. Now, if you wanna learn more about affiliate marketing, the third link in the description will take you to a free course where you'll learn affiliate marketing step-by-step, 100% step, free. Go ahead and click that third link in the description. After that, we're gonna jump back over here and then you wanna start sharing your content on social media. The reason why you wanna share your content on social media is at the very beginning, Google doesn't know anything about your website. It really doesn't trust your website. And so if you can share it on social media, whether it's a subreddit, if it's a Facebook group, if it's Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, you name it, if you share it out there, uh, and people start clicking on it and responding and reading it, it's gonna help push your website faster. Usually it can take a few months before Google sees it and starts ranking it, but if you share it on social media, you'll be able to start gaining traction a little bit faster. And then another question that I always get is about how many blog posts should I write? And in my opinion, you should write about 50 blog posts before you determine if your website's a success or failure. Now the reason why is when your first couple blog posts you're probably not going to be a great writer. You really don't know what to write. And the more you write, the better you get at it. And so if you write about 50 blog posts or write one a day or one every other day, that's going to A, improve your writing. B, it's going to give you an opportunity to show that you're serious about writing within Google's eyes. If you stop at 10, Google is going to be hard pressed to get your content out there. So I think you should write at least 50 blog posts, find 50 or, 50 or 100 topics, write on them, and then 
keep going. And then again, you want to make sure that you write 50. After that, make sure you check out the three links in the description. The, the first link will take you over to Bluehost where you can get web hosting and domain name for free for the first year. The second one will actually take you over to ThemeForce where you can find a premium WordPress theme. And then the third one will actually show you and teach you affiliate marketing step by step for free. So be sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell of this video or any other video on this channel helps you out. Thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow.